okay newton's first law of motion says let me write it first Okay, Newton's first law of motion says a body continue to be in its state of rest or the uniform motion along a straight line unless it is acted upon by some net external force to change the state. That means mathematically if you see this is the symbol for summation sigma. Sigma f is equal to zero meaning the sum of all the forces acting on the block is zero. If this is the case then dv by dt dv by dt you would understand what it is dv by dt is change in velocity with respect to time is zero so if there is no net amount of force there is no net external force then the change in velocity is zero so the body would continue to move with constant speed in a straight line or it will continue to be at rest so if the velocity is zero it will remain at zero if velocity is constant it will remain constant if the net amount of force is zero and that is pretty obvious if there is no force then who's going to bring the change how the body is going to change its state of motion if it is at uniform speed it will remain at uniform speed if it is at rest it will remain at rest that sounds very obvious isn't it so you may think that there's no need to put this thing in form of a law but the fact is during the time when he gave this law the prevalent understanding of that time was that everything comes to rest eventually. People thought and they saw from the surrounding that any rolling thing stops, any machinery it stops after fuel is over, every moving thing that stops ultimately. So the, they thought, the people thought and due to the uh, work of some scientists like Aristotle, it was prevalently, prevalently thought that everything comes to rest eventually. So no, no body moves in, ha, continues to be in motion indefinitely. But this statement says that the body will continue to be in motion indefinitely unless it is acted upon by an extern net external force. But people then thought that everything stops, nothing moves indefinitely. The problem was they didn't know about the force called friction. So if you think about a ball rolling on a ground and ultimately it stops, if you don't have a knowledge that there's a form, some force acting between the ball and the ground, then you would think that nothing moves on indefinitely. But this statement is saying that everything moves on indefinitely unless acted upon by net external force. So it is it was in complete variance of the thinking of that time. So due to this and due to some other reason that I'm going to tell you later, this was to be put in the form of a law. So this is the Newton's first law. And it is quite simple and straightforward because you have understanding of friction, you know about forces. So it's very easy and it sounds very obvious to you when you learn it now. But then it was not so obvious. So it was important that it was to be put in the form of a law and this is your Newton's first law. This law is very closely related with inertia. This is also called as Newton's law of inertia. Newton's first law of motion is also called as Newton first, uh, Newton's law of inertia. Because, uh, let's see, let's look at one example. 
this is you know one of the most famous uh, uh, illustration of physics here we have a coin and we have a piece of paper and we have a glass so if we are going to move this piece of paper slowly and gradually the coin is going to come along with the paper but if we rush and do it immediately very quickly then the coin is going to fall in the glass let's analyze why it's happening the thing is the coin is at the state of rest and as per the newton's first law it will continue to be in the state of rest unless acted upon by a net external force so when we are moving it slowly it is the coin is also moving because there's some force of friction between the paper and friction by the way is going to be a topic of detailed study later but nevertheless now there's some friction there's some force between the paper and the coin so the coin is coming along with the paper but when we do it fast then the coin doesn't match up with the speed of the paper and it falls because it was in the state of rest and it continues to be the in the state of rest but when the paper is no more there then it falls under the force of gravity so the thing is the force to be transmitted it requires some time so due to the inertia of the coin it doesn't move very fast it tends to be in the state of rest and due to that resistance the fast moving paper cannot bring the coin along with itself but when it is happening very slowly the paper has time the paper is giving coin the time then the paper actually overcomes the resistance which is offered by the coin but there is some resistance of the coin to move and that's why when the paper is moving very fast the coin is not coming along this is because of the inertia of the coin so newton when he gave the first law he also gave the definition of inertia and the concept of inertia comes along with the newton's first law the paper he published the both the newton's first law and the concept of inertia they comes together and newton was the one who gave the concept of both so here we can understand and correlate the inertia and newton's first law Newton's first law says that it has some resistance of moving it if it is at the state of rest it continues to be this in a state of rest unless some external force acts on it and the inertia concept says that it resists the motion now the only link between the two is that the force takes time to get transmitted so if it is happening very quickly the force is not getting transmitted to the coin and it was at rest now there is no external force acting on this so it will continue to be at rest now it will continue to be at rest but there when there is no support from to hold it in that position it do fall under the force of gravity but this is actually newton's first law and the law of inertia and they are very intimately related to with each other that's why newton's first law is also called as law of inertia